Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to look at some shocking venomous snake TikToks, and we're going to start with something really strange happening to a cobra. Anyway, let me know what you think about these in the comments. There appears to be a man in the Maghreb or North Africa catching what? Oh sh The comment section is going to be a free for all this time. Okay, now, there I really don't know. I know on these channels you're supposed to pretend that you know everything and all that jazz, but I don't have a production team or a script, so I can't do that. All I can guess is that it's entering some kind of state of tonic immobility. I think maybe spitting on its head causes some kind of sensory overload. That's all I got. Shedding a fang is normal. Snakes continuously replace their fangs. So that was Kentucky Reptile Zoo extracting venom from a Malayan pit viper, and they do some incredible stuff, you know, helping make anti-venom and supplying venom for studies. That species in particular though is interesting because one of the reported side effects of its bite is permanently swollen limbs, presumably due to lymph vessel damage. So this is Dave Honibal, who is a South African snake catcher who regularly sends me footage, and he's got a little snouted cobra out from under there. Okay. Job done. That was a really cool bucket design as well. The way there's like a tunnel in. I honestly thought it was a can of paint or something on top at first. But no, it's like a tunnel in and it's really unlikely that the snake will instantly manage to find its way up and out of that entrance as well. So that's a very smart design right there. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a pair of really popular YouTubers doing some kind of snake gauntlet, teasing mangrove snakes and getting them to strike and, and giggling all the way. This is another account that I often criticise and people say, oh, they're doing it for education and conservation. I I'd really love to know what part of that clip made you get the urge to go and save the rainforest. Oh, whoa. Whoa. Oh. Good doggy. I love the way lots of different animals wag their tails, even leopard geckos wag their tail when they're excited they're about to pounce on something. That was Will Robertson's Wildlife, I believe. They're a really cool account. I haven't seen much of them yet, but from what I've seen, they're worth a watch. This is one of the most extraordinary ones I've ever seen, because this guy has spent the night in this pool area. Um, 
And what he's done is just so clever as he's wrapped his body up into like a float so he doesn't drown. And he's, he's a bit cold, but he's actually gonna be fine, which is kind of amazing really, to be honest. That was a really cool one. Little brown snakes kind of tied himself into a knot to float. I'd love to know if it actually thought about this, if there was a process or if it just kind of felt reassured by pressing against its own body and realized, oh, actually I can float like this. Very interesting. We don't know a lot about what goes on in some of these snakes' heads. All we know is that some species are much more intelligent than others. Uh, this next clip is one that went viral and it's just, Incredible. I got it completely wrong when I first watched it, so take a look. So you've got a black mamba wrapped around a hawk, a hawk's immobile on the ground, and then watch what happens next. So you've got some lions that turn up, they want to eat the bird and they want to get rid of the black mamba. So my initial guess at this clip was that there would be one dead bird and either one dead lion or one dead black mamba at the end of the clip. Now watch what happens. It's gone, it's gone, it's gone, wow. it's free. Oh, the bird's alive. The bird's alive. Oh my gosh, the bird's alive. Yeah, so the bird literally just springs back up near the end. <laughs> Obviously the clip is a bit longer than that in full, but it's still a puzzle to figure out, you know, how that happened, why it happened, what was going on. Did the hawk go for the mamba first or vice versa? I, I just don't know, to be honest. Just try leafy across. Still have it in here. 26.5. Goodness. <laughs> she makes me look tiny. Yeah. Make her look big. Absolutely cracking Gaboon Viper. Massive one, they're weighing it. It's not far off the record weight by the looks of it. Gaboon Vipers are, in my opinion, the heaviest venomous snake alive today. It is totally true that Eastern Diamondbacks probably did get bigger 50, 60 years ago. I think there's one on record at 35 pounds or something absolutely ridiculous, but you're just not gonna find Diamondbacks that big anymore. This is the Molinero Snake Lab's tricolor hognose snake. They're a short colubrid snake native to South America. As adults, they'll only reach 18 to 24 inches long and live to be about eight years old. They have hardened scales on the front of their nose that they used to burrow. Yep, so tricolor hogs are like a South American version of hognose snake. They're kind of similar in size to Western hoggies, slightly different care. A lot of people are put off that species because they don't like the fact that they don't live as long as Western hoggies. But I, you know, six to eight years on average is a pretty good lifespan for any animal. I don't think it's a reason to be put off keeping one. One of the worst possible things that can happen while keeping venomous snakes happened last night during our sub live. We was trying to feed these little baby puff adders their first pinky mice. We have two of them, if you're familiar, and the female, unfortunately got a little excited and she bit herself. That's just worst case scenario. A lot of people ask me, are venomous snakes immune to their own venom? Yes, in many situations they are. Uh, they either have evolved in a way to where it doesn't affect them or they have a system in place essentially to kind of counteract the venom. But these have some of the longest fangs of any venomous snake in the world. So just the fang alone could definitely cause uh, some health issues. Now, when she bit herself, it was about mid body and she did succumb to either the venom or the puncture wound almost instantaneously. That was interesting. I think what he was saying there was correct. And I think it's interesting to make the point of saying that often on nature documentaries and stuff like that, we hear this animal has a hundred babies and statistically only two or three will make it. And then we're always told about predation being the main driver of those deaths. And often we don't think about how many of them are actually caused by misadventure, falling in something, falling off of something, injuring itself. There's other factors that make survival even tougher than we might expect. <laughs> This is cool. She's arrived to rescue a snake from someone's shop and she's dressed in a nice sari like she's going out for a nice meal or something, but she's just going to get down to it anyway. <laughs> Mm. 
काहीतरी खाल्लंय विषय यू गो व्हेरी कॉमली अप्रिहेंडेड Proof that you don't need to wave your arms around and shout, jump up and down, do any theatrics, or dress like you think you're a zookeeper to catch a snake. Existe um mito relacionado nessa serpente que quando ela morde o ser humano, é você vai morrer seco. Se ela, se você for passando em um local e tiver um contato com ela, ela chegar a te morder. Well, this is a guy I've seen many, many times talking about venomous snakes. I think he's in from Brazil, but in this occasion, he's handling what it, what looks like a Mexican vine snake to me. I don't know where he is, and the way he handles them, the way he demonstrates them, just comes off as really cruel. He just handles them like objects. Give me a second so I can just show you something so we can have a think about this. Now that we've been here talking about snakes and how you should treat them and some of the stuff we see in some of these clips, and I've been acting like a reasonable person. What would you feel like if I started getting Bobby? Forcing his mouth open, holding his gums back and trying to show his teeth and just handling him like an object. It, you know, it wouldn't be normal to be comfortable with that, but everyone seems to be comfortable with it when it's a mildly venomous snake which has some myths around it, or when it's someone doing, you know, education again in brackets. This term that keeps coming up. It doesn't make sense. There's a double standard there and it doesn't make sense. A snake like that has just as much perception of danger and threat and dread as Bobby does. Wow, what an aggressive animal. Yeah, these guys are quite menacing. Um, he's clearly chasing me, you know. Uh, it's almost like it just wants to move past you. Yeah, it's crazy. Making a fun point there, copperheads, they don't go after people. They got a really bad reputation in some areas, but truth of the matter is that they get stepped on a lot because they got such good camouflage. Okay. <laughs> They saw a guy who went to hospital with a toy snake in his jacket and couldn't be dissuaded from believing it bit him. Perhaps a sign of the, uh, the deep-rooted fear some of us have of snakes and the effects they can have on your mind. Okay, I think it's a very important time to go over why you should not buy a blue and Solaris as a pet. As we all know, Zootopia 2 came out and there is a character who is very important in the movie that is a Blue and Solaris. And reportedly, across news stations, the demand for one of these species has skyrocketed, especially in Asian countries where they're easily available. Now, this is a highly venomous pit viper. Uh, it causes necrosis, very hemotoxic venom. You do not want to own one of these and get bitten by one. I have. I almost lost my finger. I was hospitalized for several days. It is not worth it if you have no clue what you're doing. Fair points, really. We had the same issue here in the UK with meerkats. There were some ads on the TV with talking meerkats a few years ago that started coming out and people suddenly wanted meerkats as pets. Turns out meerkats stink. They like fighting and doing all sorts of stuff that is great out in the wild or in a zoo, but not in your bedroom, for example. But yeah, these trends take off and then it's the animals that kind of get caught in limbo and end up being rehomed. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting. Thank you very much for watching. I'll be back again next week.